hello, my name is Kira, your average Genshin Impact player, and today it's a Sino video. I know that I've made videos on Sino before, but he's having another, you know, release coming up, and I am so sick of hearing people talk about how Sino is their biggest regret and all that stuff, because I really think that if people just kind of looked at his kit and, you know, actually bothered to care about building him, it would be very different. So uh, I'm just going to look at his kit, we're going to be pulling numbers, talk a little bit about artifacts and weapons, but mostly it's going to be kit and team composition because those are the two really important things when building Sino. Now, I mean, I do, you know, preface this with I'm an average player, but I have been maining Sino since he dropped, so I do think I have a little bit of experience. So the thing that is a little interesting with Sino is that they kind of put him on opposite ends of the spectrum. They have him be a very attack-based character, but then they also have his elemental mastery be very important, especially if you get his signature weapon, which deals with elemental mastery as a bonus attack, but nevertheless has a crit rate uh, uh, stat up here. So. And then if you look at his attributes, the big thing that really jumps up when you get to level 90 is that it gets to a 38.4 crit damage. So he ends up being kind of this tug of war. It's almost the kind of tug of war that happens between his character. When you first meet him in the webcomic, he's, you know, the weird guy in the brown robe who shows up and purges Kali of God remains. And then when we actually meet him in Sumeru, he's the general Mahamatra. So it's almost as if they're taking those opposite sides of his personality and then melding them together in his kit. I'm not sure it's the most effective, but it's what happened. And there are ways to make it really work. I'm not really going to go into his normal or his, or his skill, because people most like to complain about his burst. So the thing about Sino is that his burst is not different from his normal attacks. It's, it's normal, it's normal attacks. It counts as normal attacks. So any character who buffs normal attacks like Yundian is going to be good for Sino or any food that buffs your normal attacks is going to be good for Sino because his burst does not actually take him out of that normal attack range. It just kind of ups everything and of course converts everything into Electro. So when we're talking just plain numbers, if we're saying just for the sake of purposes, we're going to give him an attack of 2000 and elemental mastery of 100 just to do these numbers. I think that those are both very possible, especially that little tiny 100 for the elemental mastery. Now, what's important, I don't, I'm not sure if my face is covering this or not, is that when Sino enters his burst, he gains a hundred in his elemental mastery. So even if your elemental mastery is low, if we were saying we had the 100% and just the, the 100, we're going to make it 200 for the purposes of doing the calculations here because just being in this state does add a hundred to his elemental mastery. So if we're going with the 2000 for the attack here, if we're just going through the numbers right here, this one hit damage, because of course a Sino goes into this state and then he hits one, two, three, four, five, and then he starts over one, two, three, four, five. Again, for the purposes of just doing the numbers here, I'm not going to be charging I'm not going to be talking about charged attacks. He can still do charged attacks when he's in his burst because he's just doing normal attacks. Now, if he's in that, we call we say it's 2k for the attack. He does do a 3,995 for damage if he does a charged attack. Uh, we're also not going to be counting the eye. The eye is the thing, you know, when the big eye shows up on the screen and if you manage to hit it when you do one of your bursts you do get a nice uh, 
damage uh, increases the damage of whatever hit he managed to hit the eye on with a nice 35 percent and you do fire off these things called dust stalker bolts that deal 100 percent of his attack as electro damage so if we have the th 2000 as attack you're getting an extra 6000 as electro damage every time that you hit the eye so that's really nice, but you know, we're not going to take that into our consideration of the actual numbers. It's just something to remember that we are getting this extra. And also because these are normal attacks, just looking at straight numbers without, you know, any help from weapons, without any help from, uh, from artifacts, he does have that 30... Yeah, that 38.4% crit damage. So imagine that being applied to these numbers as well. And that is just without adding anything. That is without adding anything from weapons or from artifacts. So again, just always with our 2000 attack that we're imagining he has. This first one is going to give him 3,095 uh, as attack. This next one gives him 3,260.4. Next one does 4,136.6. The next one, interestingly, actually goes down a little bit. Does uh, 4,087.6. And then the last one does 4,807.8. So when you add those all up, you are getting to 19,387.4. Now he generally does about three cycles of this during his 18 second burst, taking up to 58,162.2. Except, so those are the numbers if we're just looking at his straight burst. Now we're going to look at the authority over the nine bows. So his damage values are then increased based on his elemental mastery. So this is the part where it's nice to actually build his elemental master because it can take you up a little bit. Now we are going with the tiny little 100 elemental mastery, but remember, sacred right will swiftness adds 100. So we are actually working with 200 here. So if we just take the normal attack damage being increased by 100 for 150%, we get up to about 63,000 for his burst total, not counting crit and also not counting if you manage to hit the eye and you get the dust stalker damage. So if you manage to get him to the to uh, 2000 just for attack with the 100 as his elemental mastery those are the numbers you're going to be hitting so just no no critting no eye timing or anything like that no help from uh, teammates you're getting the 63k so not bad not bad considering that those are, you know, pretty low numbers, especially with the elemental mastery of 100. So then uh, just going to go into weapons real quick. Base attack of this is his signature weapon. I grabbed it because I love Sino, um, even though it's not the best for him because again, it does use elemental mastery, which makes it, you know, build your elemental mastery but it does have a nice crit rate of 44.1 so you get the crit damage that's part of just his natural kit and then the crit rate here but if we're going to look around just with others that i happen to have energy recharge uh is not bad because of course getting sino on the field again he's your greedy dps you all want him on the field all the time because that's when he's doing his damage this is not bad because it does energy recharge and one of sino's constellations actually has to do with energy recharge so it is something that they do kind of buff him with in his constellation so it's not a bad thing to have 
gladiator or not not gladiator death match again not bad the crit rate uh rises again so that's nice this only ever find move rank four and i only have a level 80 so the yeah, crit rate would be even bigger uh and if there are these two uh, opponents nearby attack goes up and his uh, defense also goes up so you know if sino is a little squishy the idea that he gets a nice buff with his defense that's pretty nice Here, energy recharge again, that's nice because they do do that in his constellations. I'm not going to go into constellations because they're pretty not good. If you see zero Sino, you're, you're basically, you're, you're good. I mean, it, it will bring you up, you know, so you can raise his skill and his burst up to those larger numbers. But if you see zero Sino, you're going to do plenty of damage anyway. So, elemental skill, you increase your normal and charged attack damage by 14 seconds, by 14% for 12 seconds. And again, because his burst is his normal attacks, he's going to be getting the buff from that. Really nice. Yeah, not this one, obviously. This one is not bad. The Mystic Wind Spear, obviously, I only have at level one and uh, no refinement. But within 10 seconds after an elemental reaction is triggered, attack is increased by 12%, and elemental mastery is increased by 48%. If you get that refinement up, you are going to up his elemental mastery by quite a bit. That's going to be really nice. And, uh, yeah. That's basically what I would do for him. Um, those ones, I think Deathmatch is pretty good for him. Then anything that does, you know, elemental uh, energy recharge, that's nice. And then this one is nice because it raises the elemental mastery and also just does attack. And this one, of course, isn't bad because it also does energy recharge. Well, it could also buff both his normal attack and when he goes into his burst because that's normal attack. So those would, I mean, Deathmatch would probably be the one I would put on him just out of the four stars that I do have. But these two are also really not bad. I have this one on him because, I don't know, it's got a nice crit rate. And it's his signature, so whatever. Talking about artifacts real quick, because I built Sino to basically be an attack monster, to be the most effective he can be on the field while doing his burst, I did Thundering Fury. It does that nice electro damage bonus of 15%, and dam it does the damage increase by overloaded electrocharge superconduct and hyperbloom by 40 percent and because i have a team that it has dendro and hydro characters i'm always basically causing hyperbloom as well as electrocharged and then uh when quicken which he's always going to be also triggering having two dendro characters when that's uh triggered the elemental skill cooldown Again, it's his skill, it's not his burst, but you know, it's nice to, nice to have his skill right away. So, uh, cooldown is increased by one second, so, you know, it's not bad. And then, of course, you know, this can be useful when he's just doing his normal attacks or his, or his skill, it doesn't have to be part of his burst. Now, we're talking about team composition. For Sino's team, I have, well, let's get out of here and just some humor. These are the ways that I managed to raise Sino's elemental mastery without actually raising his elemental mastery. Having two... Having two Dendro characters on the team is going to be a really nice way of raising the Elemental Mastery really easily. So just having them increases it by 50. After you trigger Burning, Quicken, or Bloom, you also get another 30 for 6 seconds. 
Aggravate spread Ivor Bloom or Virgin. You, you get the L added 20 elemental mastery, so you can go up by another 100 just by having the uh, the Dendro characters on your team and by kind of constantly causing those elemental reactions, which I'll go into when uh, I'll go into as I continue talking about party party building. Now getting a little bit more into the characters that I personally use, Sino is going to benefit the best from characters who can use their skill or their burst, cast it, and then get off the field so that you can use Sino. Sino, like we said, he's a little squishy, uh, mostly because he is on the field for that 18 seconds of his burst. My tea's going cold. And so you do want characters whose skills or their bursts will continue to cycle around him so that you don't so that he either gets the benefits of healing or he gets the benefits or you know whatever they might be causing so for me Nahida was a really good choice Uh, because, you know, her ability to, to link enemies together works really well with Sino. Because, of course, with Sino, he's not just a one-burst damage dealer. He continues to do, you know, heart attack, heart attack, heart, heart attack, heart attacks, heart attacks against any enemy that appears. Which is part of why I like him. He's great against mobs. He also works against large enemies. He works against basically any kind of enemy you're going to encounter. Because he either does that 63k damage upon a single enemy, or he's able to switch from enemy to enemy to enemy to deal with a mob. And he does this automatically, which is very nice. So with Nahida, this is the part where she does help a lot with Sino. So the elemental mastery of the active character within the field will be increased by 25%. Now she's got about a thousand, so it's gonna be taking a Sino up to 250. Plus we're adding that 200, so it's gonna add him up to four, 450. It's, it's, it's pretty nice, it's, it's pretty nice. So, so once you've gotten to that 450% on his Elemental Mastery, uh, 450 on his Elemental Mastery, you're doing a whole lot more damage when it comes to the way that the Elemental Mastery adds on to your attack. So if we say that, you know, we are adding Nahida's 250, add the 100 from having two Dendro characters, 350, plus Sino's base attack, 450 and then plus the 100 attack the 100 that he gains when he's just in his burst he's at 550 that's actually doing a lot of nice added damage so you know if you ha if you have Nahida and you can build up her elemental mastery to be a support for Sino she is going to do a wonderful job of doing that and another thing about her is because I know that she obviously does an area of effect burst which normally is not the thing to do with Sino because of course because he's moving around he is constantly if he's going after a mob he is going all over the place he is not going to be benefiting from like Kokomi's jellyfish he's just he's not going to be near enough to it he is going to in his 18 seconds he is going to move away from that jellyfish so unless you have him running around the jellyfish while he's in his burst to try to get the healing bonus, he's not going to benefit from it. He needs healing that travels with him as he goes if you want to keep healing him during his burst. Nahida is kind of an exception for me because her area of effect is just so large. Baiju I also highly recommend as a character 
for Sino. He is going to be up for grabs soon against Farina. I just did a Baiju video about why he's really good. He's really good with Sino. Uh, specifically because when he goes into his burst, our little shield here, you get to play Sino in a shield, which helps with the squishiness of the character. And you are going to be constantly causing elemental reactions. You're going to be causing Quicken all the time, naturally, just by being in the shield, because the shield does attack. The shield sends out attacks. So by doing that constant Quicken, you are just constantly doing that nice... Th those nice uh, elemental reactions that, again... If you get Quicken, you get that 30 Elemental Mastery. So, even if you aren't getting Activate Spread, Hyper Bloom, or Burgeon, you're still getting that 30 plus the, plus the 50, so 80. You're still adding 80. So, if you have Baiju and you have Sino, you're already, like, you're pretty well off. Mahita's a real nice bonus because of the 250 she can add as well as the uh, large area of effect. But again, Baiju is, again, really nice because I was talking about how you have to be able to like carry it with you. That shield will stay with Sino for a full 14 seconds. It just leaves four seconds that he's out of the shield uh, in his burst. He can survive four seconds without having a shield. <laughs> so, basically, as, you know, part of my deal I just make sure that I always do Baiju before I do Sino's Burst and it just it keeps him safest for the longest and it basically allows him to run around unchecked and just do his burst without having to worry about dying so you know it's it's really bad timing if you're trying to build a Sino team right now because it's Farina and it's Baiju and then Sino's coming right afterwards But if you are able to get Baiju, he is such a great addition to a Sino team. I was, you know, obviously Baiju came out a couple of months after Sino did, so I was messing around with characters who could be... I, I had actually had Toma for a while, uh, which worked. Which worked, but uh, adding, adding a second Dendro character really made a huge difference with the Elemental Mastery and then just being able to carry the shield around with the shield doing attacks, which is what Toma's does not not do. And Baiju just also does insane healing, so, you know. Uh, Yelan, of course, I think she's pretty self-explanatory. She's just fantastic. No matter, no matter what. She does benefit from doing another buff, uh, just through having her signature weapon. I have three character signature weapons and she happens to be one of them. So it does, the damage dealt by the wielder of this weapon is increased by 20% and this takes effect whether the character is on field or not. So Sino's, Sino's attack is again going to be raised by 20%. That's a really nice huge number that we're now getting to. And of course you can use her burst and it just follows around. She doesn't need to be on the field. This is the reason that I actually did not do Shimanawa's Reminiscence. I have Nymph's Dream on her because basically I cast her burst and then I switch it to Sino. So he does actually benefit more from the increased attack and the increased damage bonus with the Hydro. Uh, more than he does from the way that Shimano's Reminiscence uh, helps Yelan. Because that just has to be part of building the Sino team, is realizing he is your DPS. Everybody here is to support him so that he can do those massive amounts of damage when he's in his burst. Uh, but of course, you know, while I will always, always say that two Dendro characters is a really good one because, you know, it also does quicken. I do really recommend doing a Hydro character as your third, just because that then allows for Hyper Bloom, Bloom, just anything like this. You know, if you have 
Baiju, Baiju Shield and Yolan's burst going on within Nahida's Shinamea and she happens to and she happens to have, you know, linked everyone together through the Trikarma thing. Then you have Sino who is constantly triggering those elemental reactions. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. So, but you know, with with Yelan, uh, you know, with any of these characters, while I would still definitely do the two Dendro characters, you know, if you wanted to switch him for, you know, Traveler would be fine, you know, Tainari, it's like, it's always nice to have a bow character. You can get it down into, I, Yao Yao, I, I used for a while. Kaveh doesn't work, he's much more of a DPS. Uh, but, you know, Karara could also work, Kale, like, you know. You just definitely want to make sure that you're then adding a some kind of healing character because you are going to want to have some sort of healing. If you wanted to take, say say you just don't have you know say you don't have these characters. I recognize they're all four star and they're all five stars. So you know not everybody's gonna have them. So if you're able to put like King Shao on here. Uh, you know, Yunjin, normally I don't really like Geo characters with Sino because you don't get much of a reaction, but because she buffs your normal attack, she's a really nice one. Uh, Toma did lead to some nice elemental reactions while still providing a shield. Anybody who is able to really carry their burst or the skill along with them. Again, like King Shao would is, is a really good example because he will be constantly applying the hydro damage. Um, Shinobu is another one because you can cast her skill and then stop start, start Sino up. It doesn't create, of course, like that nice additional damage that having a hydro character would, but it does make her a really nice little battery. Same with Fischl. Uh, Fischl, of course, does not stay on the field, but she can be a nice battery. So if you create two other characters who can always be following Sino around, that's going to work out. So, yeah, again, you know, if I, w if I was looking at characters, mostly not Geo unless they buff normal attack. But if you want to grab another, another Electro character to be a bit of a buff that's good I mean anything like Bennett is gonna obviously be a great buff Yunjin is good and any two any two <laughs> Dendro characters basically just make sure that they're able to follow him around area of effect characters unless that area of effect is huge are not going to benefit him as much as characters whose bursts or skills can be cast and then placed upon him so uh that's basically yeah that's basically getting into the team that's getting into how you can you know work with the elemental mastery part of Sino's kit without even have to worry about making his elemental mastery personally very large you can just rely on the rest of the team to do it but then again if you are looking for artifacts you can look for an elemental elemental mastery substat just to try to raise that on your own because I, I do recognize that kind of you want to be building attack and crit and crit rate because that's what the rest of his kit seems to say it says build attack attack and crit rate you know because those are things that are huge. It's the thing that's big on his uh, personal scaling. Uh, with his, it's the main thing with his weapon. It's most of his stuff is based off of his attack percentage. It's really just this authority of the nine bows skill that makes elemental mastery all of a sudden very important. So if you don't feel like building a team that can up his elemental mastery, then you know finding artifacts with substats in Elemental Mastery, you can always go with just different artifacts if you feel like doing the obvious one, doing 
gilded dreams to raise elemental mastery you can of course do that i know a lot of people use gilded dreams but when uh, when you're able to up his elemental mastery in a way that doesn't take away from the attack bonus that you might be able to get through other sets that's really nice so if you can just focus on building his uh, attack through through his artifacts and then rely on the team to up his elemental mastery i think that's really for the best through my experience just my personal experience just my personal experience I feel like I have to add that caveat because people get like all down my throat like uh no this isn't what I thought and it's like this is just what I think it's just my opinion it's just my opinion <laughs> so anyway so that is that's Sino for me and he has worked out really well he's just he's <laughs> He's just worked out really well and I'm not gonna bother like showing off like you know how fast he can do something or go into the spiral abyss and be like oh look at what my team could do you know what I, pl I plugged the numbers I talked about artifacts I talked about weapons I, I talked about team composition really you want to be looking at just your, your your numbers and your team composition you want your attack up you want your crit rate up you want your crit obviously you want to be finding a way to get that elemental mastery in there just so you can get that nice bonus. Just so he can be doing the most damage as possible. So just remembering that Sino is going to be your DPS. You are going to be building your team around him. In the end, all will be placed remembering that his burst is normal attacks. So that anything that buffs normal attacks is going to help with his burst. And just remembering how important team comp is for either building his elemental mastery or causing elemental reactions. And just remembering to make sure that the team comp allows it so that their bursts or their skills can surround him while he runs around absolutely everywhere for those 18 seconds taking care of, taking care of any enemy that's in the area. And again, I was not factoring in when I was doing that nice thing with the getting to the 63k for the burst. I was not factoring in his crit rate. I was not factoring in the fact that you can hit with the eye. And I was, yeah, not so not factoring in the eye and i was not factoring in the dust stalker bolts that will be fired off with the eye so that's just more damage that i didn't even count at least uh, it's another 10k that you're going to count you're going to go over 7000 70 70 uh 70000 k easily with that especially if you raise his elemental mastery so, this video got way longer than I wanted it to be. Sino is a good pull. You just have to be looking at the details of his kit. It is a little weird. The stuff with Elemental Mastery is a little weird. But there are easy ways to work around it once you realize how important it is. And Sino can become a very, very strong DPS. I highly recommend Nahida if you have her. I highly, 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 highly recommend Baiju uh, if you have Primo's left over after pulling for Farina because Baiju and Sino alone, I think, would be able to carry my entire team. Anyway, my name is Kira, your average Genshin Impact player. I hope you're doing well wherever and whenever you are. Please consider uh, pulling for Sino. He's super fun to play. And I think that's the most important thing with Genshin is, you know, having a character who's super fun to play. And if you have him already and think that he's a big disappointment, maybe it's just worth re-looking, re-examining his artifacts, his team comp, his weapon... 
because there's probably something in there that just is a little wonky that can be fixed with just a few tweaks. So, um, stop saying my boy is terrible. He's not. Oh my gosh. See you later. Bye.